Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on tannin. So today we are going to talk about um, the use of tannin in winemaking, uh, which one to use, when, and uh, why are we using it. My name is Eglantine Trofo. I'm going to be your speaker today. I'm the winemaking solution product manager at Bucher Vassenhaus America, and I represent La Motelier. So before we uh, go into the webinar, uh, let me introduce you the two partners uh, for this presentation. So we have Bucher Vasselin, a uh, designer, manufacturer, and seller of material for grape and wine processing since 1856. So we are present in many wineries, uh, designing crash pads and presses and um, sorting tables and all this. But in North America, we actually partner with other brands. So we also distribute a Caso wine pumps, Costral bottling line, Alien robotic sorting, and uh, La Motabie winemaking product. La Motabie, that we can call LA, um, are, uh, is a renowned uh, brand of winemaking product that is, has been formed in Bordeaux uh, in 1878. So it's not new, it's actually one of the first brands that has been developed in France. Um, it's two years now we are in North America. We are focusing on a high quality premium product with a strong uh, purity and quality certification. Okay, so um, let's talk tannins. Um, so tannins are part of a wider category of compounds, which is the phenolic compound. Um, tannins are uh, molecules that are found in many plants. They are usually produced as a response of stress disease or, um, or as a protection. They also have many applications. We actually, the name of tannin come from um, their use in tannery to make the skin of, um, well, the, the leather skin uh, rot proof and remove the protein. But we also use them in medicine as antimicrobial, in cosmetic as antioxidant. So, many different applications and their application is gonna vary with their origin and also um, their chemical structure, okay? Uh, so let's see how, um, let's talk a little bit about chemical structure and classification. So phenolic compounds have uh, two categories, the hydrolyzable and the non-hydrolyzable. The hydrolyzable compounds, um, are um, gallic tannins that they are coming from uh, gall nuts and tara nuts. So gallic tannins are actually often used in Chinese medicine as antimicrobial and antioxidant. They are also used in the tanning um, industry because they react strongly with protein. Um, and as you can see, it's a very small molecule that is very reactive. Next category is elagic tannins. Elagic tannins in wine usually come from oak and chestnuts. Um, they are a little bit bigger. They are not as reactive as gallic tannin, but they are very good as a buffer, a redox buffer. So they will help you uh, maintaining and managing your uh, redox potential. Good antioxidants and good anti-reduction. The other category of the non-hydrolyzable uh, can be split in two categories. The non-flavanoids, uh, which are the easily oxidable compounds, so such as phenolic acids, hydroxycinamic acids. They are highly present in wine, in grapes, actually. They are in the flesh of the grapes. They are uh, the precursors of oxidation and the precursors of Brettanomyces stain. So they are present. We can not do much about it but let's uh, be careful with this category of compounds. The other one, the flavanoids, uh, can be again separated in three other categories. So the flavanols, flavanols that are the small phenolic compounds that participate to co-pigmentation and wine mouthfeel. There is some studies that show a uh, correlation between like high rated uh, wine and their concentration in flavanols. Anthocyanin, as you probably already know, anthocyanin is the most known phenolic compound in wine as they are responsible of the wine color. And condensed tannins. Condensed tannins can be actually from a monomer of a catechin to a um, um, polymeric chain of 100 units. Um, 
So condensed tannins is a big family. They can come from grape seeds, grape skin, and exotic wood. If they come from grape seeds, uh, they are actually smaller polymer, two to 16 units of catechin and epicatechin, very reactive, often bitter, um, but very good for uh, polymerization and color stabilization. The skin tannins are usually much longer uh, polymeric chain from three to 83 units, um, much smoother in texture, less reactive, and they more have a silky feeling. When we talk about exotic wood, we actually talk about quebracho and mimosa, and they do have small polymers that are uh, very, um, the molecule is very similar to the catechin. Uh, they do react strongly with oxidative enzymes such as lacase and polyphenol oxidase, and also just protein in general. So, gallic tannins, gallic tannins coming from gallnuts, hydrolyzable tannin. Uh, act as an antioxidant, antioxidasic, and protein removal. Um, Sensory-wise, it tends to be bitter and rough, so that's a tannin that is really purely technologic. Elagic tannins um, used to manage a redox potential, uh, antioxidant, but also can react with um, sulf sulfur molecules, so mercaptans of uh, reduction. Um, in terms of organoleptic, uh, oak can be a bit rough, chestnut can be a bit dry. Condensed tannins, so we use them for their ability to polymerize uh, and color stabilization, mouthfeel as well, it does participate to structure and mouthfeel. Um, the one coming from exotic wood and seeds can have a um, protein removal and antioxidasic uh, impact. Organoleptic-wise, um, seed tannin are more green and bitter, skin tannins are silky and smooth, and exotic woods are uh, dry and rough. So as you can see, uh, different categories of tannins uh, that, um, depending their origin, they actually have a different chemical uh, structure, which will explain um, different applications. But that's not it, because also the process of production can impact the quality, the reactivity, and the application of these tannins. So here is how we produce analogical tannins. We select a raw material, which this will impact the yield and the property. Um, as um, we always at La Motte we focus on high quality and purity of our products. So, we are having a very uh, strict um, quality control on the production of our tannins. First of all, for the raw material, so we will extract them from um, exotic wood or oak or grapes. We completely own our company that makes um, oak alternatives. So our oak tannins are um, derived from our oak alternatives. So we completely um, manage and control this. Then we arrive to the pretreatment of the raw material, which means if we play, if we use oak, uh, we are going to play with some toasting levels and work with different toast. Uh, when we use grapes, we usually uh, rinse the grapes before we extract it. The extraction step is probably one of the most important. We have to use a solvent, uh, which can be water, alcohol, or a hydro hydroalcoholic solution. Uh, at La Motte we focus um, mostly on water extracted um, tannins. So when you're extracting water, you have a much lower yield, but you actually uh, manage to have a much better selectivity. So focusing on quality, that's uh, what we want. Then on alcohol, you have much higher yield, but lower uh, purity and lower uh, selectivity. Then temperature and maceration can be used too. Then from this step, we will have liquid tannins. So our liquid tannins are going to be uh, purified and selected, and then we can play on reformulation to end up with our final product. So our purification um, step is very important. We um, want to make sure our tannins have a low acid phenol content. Uh, acid phenols can be precursors of oxidation and also um, precursors of brittanomyces stain, so volatile phenols. So we don't want to, there is already a lot 
naturally in the grapes we don't want to bring more um, we are looking at having stable tannins through time so we don't want to be the one uh, bringing precursors of oxidation and also we have to be uh, codex approved so legal uh, the last step of drying it's very essential for us we have very specific process of um, drying and granulation that makes our tannin instantaneously soluble so our tannins are very easy to dissolve in water or alcohol or wine but also you can use them directly as a powder okay so we um, this is one of our uh, biggest uh, points is that we are instantaneously soluble our focus is on uh, stability purity filtrability and practicality so our tannins are easy to dissolve and can also be uh, directed uh, added to wine or grapes okay so um, now that we understand the different families and also the impact of the process let's talk a little bit more uh, wine making and practical case so um, when would we add uh, tannins and which one do we add when two different categories of tannins one would be for fermentation so the fermentation tannins are highly reactive uh, usually highly reactive means they react strongly with um, protein uh, which means that they react strongly with your salivary protein so they tend to be rough so these tannins are uh, more uh, made for high and quick reactions so not really for finishing uh, aging tannins so we look at tannins for antioxidant antioxidasic protein removal improving clarification color stability and um, improving the mouthfeel so there is six um, points that we want to uh, address when we are using fermentation tannins then we have the aging and finishing tannins that are much more uh, refined and purified uh, here we are looking at antioxidant working on the aging potential and the redox potential balancing the mouthfeel the structure of the wine and also increasing the aromatic complexity and uh, clean aromas so we are really um, separating the second category into um, technologic application and organoleptic application okay uh, these tannins obviously have to be uh, filtrable soluble and completely refined so they don't impact strongly the taste of the wine so talking about uh, first uh, fermentation tannins i would like to um, focus on two tannins today because we do have two tannins that can completely fulfill all these uh, parameters um, required for fermentation tannins so i'm going to start with the uh, protanin r which is our sacrificial tannin that will help you preserve your grape phenolic potential so protanin r is a pure pure proanthocyanidic tannin selected for its strong um, reaction with lacase and polyphenol oxidase so we do inhibit um, we, we did like many um, trial and competitive studies where we compare our protanin r to other um, tannins on the market and our um, is the one that will react the most with lacase so we can completely inhibit lacase and ppo activity with a much lower dosage than other tannins you find on the market uh, the other aspect of um, protanin r is that so it has a strong affinity with protein which qualify him for uh, being a sacrificial tannin it inhibits strongly uh, the lacase and ppo it can improve color stabilities by protecting your own phenolic comp compounds improve clarification and preserves great potential here's the concept of a sacrificial tannin so you have a control or you have a wine where it's a grape that you add protanin r and basically you are going to extract your own phenolic compounds so you have your own endogenous tannins and in this one you have the uh, tannin plus protanin r you also extract proteins your protein are going to react with tannin because that's what they do that's how it is um, adding protanin R, we are actually using protanin R as a sacrificial, so it's going to react first with the protein before your own tannin reacts, which basically means that at the end of fermentation, this is what is left of your own tannins, 
Um, so basically you can see the difference yourself, but we uh, end up with, we lost a lot of tannin by um, not protecting them just because they react with proteins. This is not even regarding oxidation. Um, while using protein R, you are protecting a lot. So you preserve your grape potential for your color, but also for your antioxidant power and for your mouthfeel. Application of this tannin uh, at our harvest or as soon as possible. Um, if you do have a long transport, I recommend to use it in the bin as soon as the grapes are picked. And you can do a direct addition on grapes. So direct addition means directly the powder, or you can make a solution and just put it on grapes. So perfect candidate would be uh, long traveling grapes, contaminated grapes with botrytis or rot, um, or like grapes that are just gonna soak for a while um, in juice, so even cold soaking is a very good application. The, um, so with uh, protein R, we are actually able to help with antioxidant, antioxidasic, removing proteins, improving clarification. Now uh, we also developed, um, so let's see some results actually. Antioxidasic, um, you can see here uh, the um, a table that um, show how protein R inhibits the lacase activity. So we are looking at lacase activity. Um, below, under 0.1, it's a healthy must. Under 1, it's a low contamination. From 4 to 30, it's high botrytis contamination. The control here uh, is having four units of lacase by milliliters, which is considered high contamination. By using 10 grams per hectoliters, we reduce it to one. So we put it at low contamination. 20 grams per hectoliters, we completely inhibit. The interesting part here is to see that in wine, in the resulting wine, actually lacase is still active. Even if we think alcohol will inhibit lacase activity, that's actually not true. Um, we found out that lacase is still active in wine and will make the wine much more unstable regarding oxidation um, and just browning, losing color and losing texture very fast. So um, it is important to treat as soon as possible, but you can see that using a tannin completely allowed you to inhibit the activity. Resulting wine would be like this. So you can see it's pretty um, uh, self-speaking, I would say. Uh, we can see that the color of the control is much lighter. Obviously, we did nothing and there is botrytis in this wine. So it gets oxidized. We lost the compounds. We lost the color. We lost the phenolic compounds and we lost the mouthfeel. 10 or 20 grams per hectoliters are improving the color stability and the taste of the wine. If we look at another uh, graph where we are uh, showing the color, so yellow is yellow, red is red and purple is purple, and also the green spot is uh, the phenolic compounds. Content, you can see that when we compare control to protein R, this wine, um, the analysis has been made after Malo. Um, the color is almost um, double, yeah, and the amount of phenolic compounds is almost double too. So we managed to protect half of the compounds that they completely uh, disappear in the control, while when we use protein R, we maintain them in the wine. Last point that I want to show you is about color stabilization. So here is a result of, we are looking at the stability of the color. The lower is the Delta NTU after a cold test, um, the more stable is the color. Um, we are looking here at after the first racking, so after Mallow, and here is after the second racking, so usually um, a good four to five months after Mallow. And you can see that um, with using protein R, we are improving the color, but also we are making this color much more stable through time. It's a long lasting effect. As you can see, after the second uh, racking, we are getting the gap between the control and the protein R um, trial is actually much bigger. So yeah, so antioxidant, antioxidasic, removing proteins, improving clarification, helping with stabilize, color stabilization. Um, now, um, it could actually um, be enough by itself. We still develop a second tannin that is actually focusing on color stabilization and mouthfeel, uh, which is a soft and V. So um, 
here is just uh, to explain you the test that we do to um, uh, test our tannins and understand their reactivity with color. So we do the test of polymerization by ethanol, which you have a solution of tannins, you put an excess of ethanol, it becomes hazy because they react together. The haze intensity gives you the tannin efficiency, the speed of the appearance of the haze gives you the reactivity of the tannin and how fast our tannin will be to fix color. So we compare a bunch of uh, tannins. The best one, theoretically, uh, as we said previously, are grape tannins. So um, we look at grape tannins, we look at catechin, and we also um, develop a formula specific formulation that is our soft and V um, for stability of color. As you can see here, through time, um, soft and V is as good as a grape tannin in terms of react efficiency. So um, the haze intensity, but soft and V is much faster to react. So it will have a very uh, fast action in stabilizing color. So it's better in reactivity. So soft and V is a specific formulation uh, that is including, it's a catechin that is bonded to a plant polysaccharide. So we develop this formulation for color stabilization and we have a pattern on uh, this um, tannin bonded to plant polysaccharide. There is no phenolic acids. Again, we focus on purity and there is a high content, very high content on catechin to have this strong reactivity. We are promoting um, a long lasting effect because the uh, molecule we are targeting to create is tannin bonded to uh, anthocyanin via ethanol bridge. And since this tannin is also bonded to polysaccharide, it makes it soft and stable. Okay, so some results here. Um, in a burgundy wine and in a Bordeaux wine, three months after marrow, we compare a wine with or without the soft tan V. Uh, and you can see that the results are pretty similar. We are having a plus seven and plus nine percent in uh, our total um, tannins. So our tannins has been uh, fixed and stable. Uh, our uh, total phenolic compound, sorry, our tannin, purely tannins, we have plus 18 in a Pinot and plus nine in a Bordeaux. So um, different result, but still an increase. In terms of color, we are around plus 16 and plus 13 uh, in terms of color intensity. And if we look at the stability of the color, we are having a huge impact on the stability of the color where we are improving the stability of 77 and 85%. So, Soft V allows us to make a more stable um, wine with more color, like more color and more stable color, sorry. Another example in a thermovinified um, grapes, the juice. Uh, so as you probably know, thermovinified wines are the most unstable in terms of color. It's very hard to stabilize color. So that's why we work on a thermovinification. And you can see here that when we compare the control to soft and V addition, uh, we are looking at the loss of color from post-alcoholic uh, to six months after. And you can see that the control lost almost 40%, so 39. And we are only at 23 and 20% 20, uh, of loss of color when we use soft and V. So we can reduce at like half of the loss. It's pretty impressive. Um, I did many trials for the last two years with soft and V in US. I wanted to share um, the opinion of one of our um, one of um, our, the winemakers that did uh, this trial, so Christian Revenant, that has been elected winemaker of the year since in 2017. Uh, Christian is making wines over like 35 vintages. He tried many uh, different tannins, and he really liked the soft and He wanted to share his experience with it. He used it on every grape varieties. And you find it very soft. You find that it improves the structure and the balance. Also, it helps very um, much the color stabilization without impacting the wine profile. So this was a pretty good comment. Uh, we have a full interview recorded by um, Christian that you can find on YouTube if you want to know more about it. Okay, so um, basically, um, soft and V is a specific formulation that we patterned. Uh, where we have a catechin bonded to a plant polysaccharide, no phenolic acids um, because we focus on purity, uh, very high content in catechin. So high reactivity, it stabilizes color, it has a long lasting effect, 
uh, and also it improves the mouse feel and feels the meat palate. Application 120 to 200 grams per ton uh, when we're uh, at the beginning of fermentation. In thermovinified wine, we want to do it as soon as possible. Okay, so um, basically with these two tallings, we cover, we fulfill all the requirements that we are asking for uh, fermentation tannins. Now, um, the next application on tannins is uh, during aging and pre-bottling. So at this moment, uh, so we saw previously that at this moment, uh, we need more refined and with higher purification level um, tannins. Okay, because these tannins are gonna stay in the wine and this tannin can be tasted. Uh, there is two different uh, reasons why we would use tannins here. There is a technical application and the organoleptic improvement. So in terms of technical application, um, to prevent oxidation or prevent and treat reduction, so play with redox potential and stabilizing redox potential, uh, the best tannins are elagic tannins and gallic tannins. Okay. Uh, then when we are talking about increasing tannin matrix, so this would be more to compensate a lack of tannins. So because grapes were lower in uh, skin tannin, uh, such as Pinot Noir, for example, uh, grapes uh, were having a low extraction rate. You were having grapes coming from a high yield vineyard. Um, you know, it could be many reasons why um, the wine is a uh, lack of tannins and um, in a structure, so we want to play, to use condensed tannins. In this case, coming from grapes, uh, it's usually better. So grape tannins to compensate what is missing from the grapes. Uh, this will improve polymerization, so you will have a better structure, a smoother structure, but also color stabilization. Then, in terms of organoleptic improvement, you can balance structure and mouthfeel. You can actually, I know it sounds crazy when I say this to people, but you can actually um, balance a two tannic wine by adding tannins. Um, it's not because a wine tastes tannic that you can't add more tannins. There is actually, um, often you taste too much tannins because your wine has tannin at the beginning or tannin at the end and it's lacking in the middle. So the tannins feel not balanced and it feels rough and too tannic but adding tannins that will homogenize and make the wine much more uniform and like, you know, put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Uh, this can be done by adding tannins and you make the wine just uh, bigger, more structured and fuller instead of using finding agents that will just cut the edges of the wine. So this can be possible by adding tannins. Um, you can increase roundness and uh, length. You can also um, play on the aromas by adding complexity, uh, toasted notes, um, oaky notes. You can leave the fruit. And the other thing is that you can clean the aromas. You can clean reduction. You can clean, um, you can reduce the perception of volatile phenols and also smoke. Okay, so let's see what we have in our toolbox. Um, I like to call it toolbox because it, at this step, we're not talking about um, tannins for every wine. We really are talking about different tools uh, that has to be adapted depending the situation and the wine. So um, I like to call it toolbox. It's not for every wine, but it's important to understand and know uh, what tannins can do. And what uh, it's good to be aware of all your options. Okay, so at La Motte, uh, we developed uh, three big categories. One is gonna be our grape tannins. It's under the Vinitan category. In US, we have the Vinitan Advance. 100% uh, uh, condensed tannin com coming from grapes. They are uh, here to help the structure. Uh, the stability of the color improves the aging potential and also it tends to uh, leave the fruity character. Mm, I, when I taste, I see uh, shapes. Uh, so I know everybody is different, but my best way to explain this tannin is actually uh, this square at the bottom with round edges. So um, Vinitan Advance for me is the tannin that is supporting the wine, is giving body, is giving fullness. It's um, it's the glue that puts uh, the puzzle all together. You know, it's 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 basically feeling and and 
making sure all your rough tannins are actually uh, all put together and make the wine complete. It's a piece of, yeah, it's what makes the wine complete and the glue together. Mm. The next uh, category is the category of the soft tan. I already told you about the soft tan process where we bind um, polysaccharide and tannins. So we have the soft tan vinification. This one is during aging, uh, during uh, fermentation. We just talked about it. Then we have the sweetness, the power, and the finition. Um, these uh, three tannins will be here for more strict structure, stabilization, and volume. Uh, I like to see them as a big round. So that's the sensation they do uh, when you um, put it in a wine and you taste after. They give you this coated round bowl. Um, they smooth all the edges. Our last category is actually, uh, it's tan essence. So it's our oak tannins. So we have an untoasted oak and toasted oak. Um, and these tannins are more used for antioxidant purpose, regulation of the redox potential, and also um, give precision to the wine. So this one would be the opposite of the soft tan in terms of uh, feeling that uh, it, it's giving you angles, precision and direction. So that's perfect for a wine that is a bit um, flabby or you, you don't know where the wine is going. Uh, you know, like there is no focus. A tan essence will give a focus to your wine, a length and a linearity, which is very interesting tool. So, Let's talk a little bit more of each category. If we go on the um, Vinitan Advance, so 100% grape tannin, uh, it's um, very highly purified. So we have a high concentration in oligomers, which are short um, chain of um, condensed tannins and very low acid phenol content as we try to be in every, uh, as we are in every of our tannins. Uh, the effect, there is a high polymerization potential, which means very good for color stabilization, but also very good to smooth um, down all the um, texture and uh, rough tannins. Uh, it also, uh, this is explained by this graph here. We are looking at the um, salivary protein index. So salivary protein index is, uh, the in, is directly related. So it's looking at how the tannins of the wine itself react with your salivary protein and uh, so how much the wine is astringent and drying effect. So we are looking at the astringency and the drying effect. And so the lowest is this number and the less astringency you will have in the wine. So if we look at the wine, the control is in dark blue and then the addiction of init and advance are in gray and lighter gray. Uh, and you can see that basically adding tannin reduce the astringency perception. Sounds crazy, right? But it's not. Um, it's actually the polymerization um, process is making your molecule much, uh, your tannin much smoother. So very short molecules might be bitter and astringent, while in some categories that when the polymer is a little bit longer, it feels more silky. So Vinitan advance by promoting polymerization uh, change the full structure of the wine to make it more silky and more stable. Okay, so we increase the mid palate, we balance the wine structure, we improve the phenolic potential of the wine, so it's a very good tannin to use during aging to also give more um, potential to age. And it tends to boost fruitiness, so we keep realizing this when we do trials, it just like opens the wine and cleans the nose. It has an excellent filtrability and stability through time. Again, um, it is purified and a grape tannin. So as soon as you put it in your wine, it becomes part of your wine and it's just going through the full process of polymerization, but you really replace uh, tannin that you would have extracted from your own grapes. Application, end of fermentation. So during aging, you can put it for color stabilization, preserving your wine potential and also just a pre bottling until like two days pre bottling, it's fine. Um, for every wine, red, white, or rose, 5 to 15 grams per hectoliters. The next tanning is going to be um, about the soft tan range. So I already told you about the process of uh, soft tan, tanning bonded to polysaccharide. The vinification, soft tan V, we talked about it, it's catechin. 
are bound to polysaccharide and this is made for color stabilization. The power and the sweetness are very technologic tannins that um, soft and power is, has been developed for color stabilization, uh, especially when you are uh, doing microox. And the soft and sweetness is here for uh, redox management. It really acts as a buffer of redox. Uh, it helps for um, color stabilization, antioxidant uh, protection as well. Then soft and finition is gonna be a blend of toasted and untoasted oak uh, bonded to polysaccharide. Here we are looking at reducing astringency in uh, finishing tannin. We are looking at uh, increasing aroma complexity and also cleaning. So reducing astringency perception, here you have results of trials that um, uh, we are looking at um, the IPT, so the total phenolic compounds, and also uh, the um, salivary protein index. As you can see, when we add soft and FT, um, we are increasing the phenolic compound. That's pretty obvious, it makes sense. And we are decreasing the salivary protein index, which means we are decreasing the astringency. So same, context, same thing than the vignette and advance. Here, we are not doing it because of uh, the polymerization, but because of the polysaccharide that is bonded to the tannin. The second thing is the uh, aromatic notes. So um, it increases aromatic notes. So we are focusing on toasted almonds. So in here, you can see the profile of the wine that is on the toasted almond and vanilla. Uh, so that's what we are increasing in the wine, part of aromatic complexity. The last point, which I think is actually probably the most interesting, is how um, soft NFT reduce the perception of volatile phenol. We did a big study on the, um, how soft NFT impacts the sensory threshold of volatile phenols in wine. So you can see there is many different wines, all from different locations in Europe. And we are looking at the sensory threshold. So the higher the sensory threshold and the lower you perceive it in the wine. Okay. And every time we add, so the dark brown is when we add soft NFT. Every time we add soft NFT in a very consistent way, we are increasing um, the sensory threshold, which means that we are decreasing the perception of the volatile phenol um, from 1.5 to 3 times. So it's actually very important. There is few studies that show this, that actually oak and green character can reduce the sensory, it can increase the sensory threshold, so reduce the perception of volatile phenol uh, in wine. So it's very interesting, but soft NFT is the best for this. Volatile phenol, but also um, smoke. Our last category is gonna be the tan essence, so our 100% French oak tannins. They do have a high structural potential and power, so we use them uh, to give direction, to give lines, and to give structure to wine, but also as a buffer um, uh, of redox potential. It helps maintaining uh, your redox potential stable, so your wine gets less sensitive to oxidation or less sensitive to reduction as well and it brings aromatic complexity. We have two tannins. One is tannessence volume. It is a fresh oak tannin. This one will give you freshness and fruitiness, volume, sweetness in the mouth, and the dosage is two to 10 grams per hectoliters on every type of wine. The second one is tannessence forte. This is for toasted oak tannins. We are looking more at caramel, toasted nuts, uh, aromas. It does bind very good with um, Mercaptan, so you clean a uh, reduction, and but it gives a very strong um, structural impact. So we are looking at much lower dosage, one to five. Um, I do like this tannin from like 0.5 to one gram per hectoliters in sparkling wine. At the dosage, it gives this uh, little toasted nut uh, note, um, you know, that can be associated with yeasty character, and it brings tension and uh, linearity that gives direction to the wine. So that's something I highly recommend in sparkling wine uh, to try. But so these tannins coming from oak are actually more uh, focused on a specific application. Okay, so the last point here is to do trials. 
So to set up trial, you can do your own solution of one or two percent in 13 percent alcohol, but you can also call me and I'm gonna give you a um, sample trial, um, which I'm gonna show you right now how they look like. So uh, if you ask me, I can send you a kit that looks like this. Um, and you will have tannins that looks like this, for example. Oops, sorry. That basically is a little um, dropper. So you open it, you drop it, and you're gonna put drops into your wine. Um, and then you can taste right away. So it is a um, very useful um, tool. You can set a bench trial and take your decision immediately. So usually one drop of the solution in 50 mils um, of wine will give you one gram per hectoliters. Uh, you make the add, you mix the sample, and you can taste right away. Some people taste right away. Some people like to keep the sample and taste a uh, few hours later or um, a day after just to understand how it would react. I'm very happy to, um, well, I offer to come to the winery and do um, the tasting with you or setting the testing for you. Uh, nowadays, it's really not the case as we are all um, remote um, working. So we are, um, let's say that to um, still do these tannins, I can send you the samples and I'm happy to do a video conference with you or a phone call to um, explain you how to use it and you can do it at home or you can do it in the winery and it's very easy. So please, we have sample kit ready for you. Uh, to set up bench trial so let me know and i'm happy to send you some um, as soon as possible okay so um, as a conclusion um, on this uh, tannin presentation so we have four categories of tannins gallic tannins that are coming from gallnuts that are used mostly in um, fermentation or as sacrificial antioxidant antioxidasic and protein removal they are really rough and dry Elagic tannins coming from oak or chestnuts, antioxidants, redox potential, aroma cleanliness, these tannins, depending their purity and their process of production, they can be uh, used any time in the process. Condensed tannins from grapes, uh, color stabilization, mouthfeel, and aroma cleanliness, these tannins are usually more used during aging and pre-bottling because they are more refined and you use them to compensate a lack of your own tannins. Condensed tannins from exotic wood, antioxidasic protein removal, not as rough as gallic tannins, but very good uh, reaction um, reactivity. So we use them as uh, usually sacrificial tannins. Okay, so the origin and the uh, process of production is very important to understand the uh, type of tannins, the application, and the reactivity. But also think about purity. That's essential um, to make sure you don't have side effects. Then in terms of fermentation tannins, so for antioxidant, antioxidasic, protein removal and color stabilization, we talk protein R. Color stabilization, mouthfeel balance, soft tan V. These two tannins, uh, protein R is usually added on grapes as soon as possible, soft tan V is adding at the beginning of fermentation. Aging and finishing tannins, much more refined uh, product. Uh, completely uh, purified and soluble and filtrable uh, as antioxidants. Uh, we can use uh, condensed tannins such as vinit and advance or oak tannins such as tan essence volume or tan essence forte. Color stabilization that's during maturation, during aging, vinit and advance. For mouse feel balance, aroma complexity, please let me know. I send you a sample kit and we do bench trials. Uh, because you can taste and see right away what it does um, and take your decision like this. Aroma cleanliness, uh, usually it's oak tannin, so uh, tan essence volume and tan essence forte for reductive or oxidative uh, fault or taint. Soft and FT if we want to work with smoke and um, bread taint. Okay, this is a summary of uh, all our tannins. I'm happy to send you uh, this. Uh, I will let you look at it. But basically, all our finishing tannins can be added from malolactic to two days pre-bottling. Um, everything is possible. So thank you very much for your attention. 
Uh, you can find the recording on this webinar on our website, bvnorthamerica.com slash webinars. You can also find uh, it on our YouTube channel uh, under Bucher Vassman North America. If you have any question, please email me. Uh, if you want any tanning kits, please email me. If you want to set up a um, video call, um, please email me. Uh, but also uh, now, if you have questions right now, uh, it's a good time. I'm going to open the question and answer portion. Thank you very much.